You have a nice rocket and you want to add a payload tube to the rocket. Now a payload tube consists of three items. You got your nose cone, a body tube, and the shoulder. Uh, typically what you'll have is a balsa nose block, and that's what these things are called here. But say you don't have one of these because these are rather expensive. So what are you going to do? Well, the purpose of this video is for me to show you how you can make your own payload tubes, particularly this uh, shoulder here. And I'm going to show you how to do that out of a regular tube coupler. So let me get this out of the way and let's get started. So you're going to take a tube coupler like this. And uh, this is going to save you a lot of time. And we showed you how to make your own tube couplers if you don't have one. But I like to start with a pre-made tube coupler. Um, and then we're going to take some Kevlar and we're going to make a loop for the parachute to attach to it instead of using a, um, a metal screw eye like, like you typically would with a balsa nose block. So you're going to start with some Kevlar and for small rockets I use the 100 pound Kevlar. For medium sized rockets I'll use 300 pound. And for high power you could probably use the 1500 pound that we he sell here at Apogee Components. Now you want to take a length of this and you want it pretty long. So I wrap it around the coupler length at least two times. Okay, so that's two times length right there. And as we said before, when we're making our own tube couplers, you want to have the coupler at least two times the diameter of the coupler. All right, so I'm going to cut that off there. Okay, now I want to fold it in half. And I want to tie a knot up here at the top. Uh, actually, I want to make a loop. So I'm just folding in half and then just doing a single, single hitch knot right here. All right. Now that's where my parachute is going to be attached. Now on this end, what we want to do is we want to glue the sides of the, the shock cord against the inside of the coupler. And we're going to, um, just doing it like this is not very strong because the, the cord could just simply pull out of the glue. So what we want to typically do is to use the old Estes style shock cord attachment where you take a piece of paper and some glue and have a paper towel handy here and spread the glue on your piece of paper. and just lay the shot cord in it on a, on a little bit of a diagonal. And then just fold it twice. Okay. You're going to end up something that looks like that. Now, uh, you also want to put a gentle curve into it because that's going to get glued on the inside of the coupler. So while the glue is still wet, kind of press it in there and slide it around and it will pick up the curvature of the inside of the coupler. And you're going to want to do the same thing to the other leg of that. And when you're done, now the glue is already dried on these, but uh, I have this. Now this is going to be glued inside. Now typically I like to glue it, if this is the front end of the rocket, I like to glue this little paper tab as far as forward as possible. But it doesn't have to be all the way at the front. It can be near the back. But you do want to save room on the back. Uh, you don't want to put it all the way in because you want to put a, a, a paper disc in there. So again, we'll just put some glue on these. And you want to put these on opposite sides of each other. So this one is on this side. Let me spread the glue around here. And then this one will be on this side. Now try to position it inside so that when you pull on that the very end, both legs will be equal, so that will be right in the middle. All right, and then 
before the glue is completely dry, go ahead and put a little bit more glue on top of that to really cinch it down. And then you want to let that completely dry. And then you get something like this. All right, pretty simple so far. Then we want to make a, a cardboard disc. Now, if you don't have cardboard, you can come to the Apogee website, and we do have sell this. This is just 0.048 thickness cardstock. Uh, this is the good kind that you see on a lot of centering rings. And you can see I've, I've, basically what I've done here is I've drawn a line across and then just made some little notches right on the disc there like that. And that's so that I, when I stick it into the, the coupler like this, the, the uh, shock cord will fit into the notches. Now if you need help making these discs, um, see our video building skill level 2 model rockets. It shows you how to cut these discs so that they fit perfectly inside. Come on, go on there. There we go. Okay, and then I want to recess it into the tube, probably no more than about an eighth of an inch. And then I can put a fillet of glue on both sides of that coupler or on both sides of the disc, sorry. And then also put glue into that notch. Uh, by putting glue in that notch, you seal it off so that no, the, none of the exhaust gases from the engine can get in there. And, and if this is a payload bay and you have electronics, nothing can get into the, to, to the payload bay to, to toast the electronics. And then you can do the same thing on this side, and I'm going to just drop it in there. And you may not be able to see this. Uh, but right now it's just kind of gooed around on, on the, the inside, and I'm just going to take a, a dowel, and I'm using the back end of a hobby knife, and spreading it around inside there so it's consistent all the way around. All right, we're almost done here. So what we did, just kind of reviewing, we, we take our uh, the Kevlar, we glued it to the paper tabs, and then we stuck a disc inside. And then we're going to glue that in place. Now this is very strong. This will easily handle the ejection charge of the rocket. So I'm going to set this aside to dry. And here we have one that's dry. Now you say, now why did we tie this knot right here? Well, if one of these should accidentally come apart, you know, and it pulled out, and one stayed, um, if they weren't tied apart, this, this would be just a free string right here hanging in the wind, and our parachute would just slip off. By doing it this way, now the parachute will still be attached, even if one strand is, is blowing in the breeze. Now this is very strong. You can see I cannot pull it out. Now, in the past, I used to make them like this, where I put the loop right in the middle. But what this does is it flexes, it puts a lot of stress on the disc itself. So now the disc has to be very strong, and that's why a lot of people like to use plywood. In fact, you could actually pull this apart. Let's see if I can do it. No, it's still strong, but you can see I'm starting to tear, starting to tear the... Uh, cardstock there. But by doing it this way, there is no loads at all on that disc. And so all the load is on the side, on the inside of that coupler. And then so we're, when we're done, this is kind of what we're, we're looking at, and we can glue it onto a tube like that. You want to glue it so that you have at least one body tube diameter of the coupler hanging out of the tube, so that when you put it on the rocket, it fits nicely inside, and basically you have your your payload bay then. Now you can you can modify a kit like I did with here with the Avion. Some kits that are really long will come with two tubes and a coupler, and these are really great because now you can add the payload bay. You can just use the top tube as your payload tube, and put all of your parachutes and streamers down here in the bottom. Now, this, uh, a lot of people like to, to fly the Aspire with an altimeter to see if it really does go a mile high. And uh, this is the way you'll do it. That's how you'll modify it. 
So there you go. That's how to make a your own payload tube uh, without using a balsa nose block. And that's going to save you a lot of money and you're going to look like a genius because, hey, you did it with practically nothing at all. The only thing you needed to buy was actually just the Kevlar cord. So my name is Tim Van Milligan and this is the Apogee Rocketry Workshop and uh, please visit our website and let us know how we're doing.